This car has no rivals. There is only one car on this planet that can do what the Mercedes EQB can do. Let me show you what I mean. So what's so special about the EQB? Looks pretty conventional, just like your average mid-sized SUV. But look at the front of it. That big glossy grille panel that blends into the lights should give something away. It is electric. So it's got the same front end as like the EQS, the EQE, etc. This isn't a bespoke electric platform there, by the way. This is based on the conventional GLB which is already quite a fantastic car. So the one we have here is the EQB 350, which has a dual motor, 288 brake horsepower, 66.6 .6 kilowatt hour battery. Um, it's fine, the range, you've got 250 miles. That's, pre that's pretty much standard in a car of this size, to be fair, so it's nothing remarkable. You must be thinking, Nicola, what on earth are you on about? There are loads of electric SUVs on the market that can compete with this thing. It's not outrageously fast or anything either. 0-62 takes around six seconds, which is hot hatch quick, but not Tesla rapid. But do you know what? It's quick enough. You've got 370 newton meters of torque. That'll do. And then on the motorway, it picks up speed beautifully. My motorway journey here today was very nice. Very nice and quiet the tiniest little bit of wind noise. Nothing to complain about, if I'm honest. On these country roads, I mean, the steering feels nice and precise. It feels very safe, very secure, you know, refined, standard, lovely Mercedes SUV driving. Meh. The one pedal driving in this, I think, works really nicely. Because some cars, if you're going to use the regen braking, which is basically in an electric car, if you lift your foot off the accelerator, it puts power back into the battery. So when you're using it in this car, it's done really smoothly. Some cars, you lift your foot off and it's kind of like a whoa. But in this, look, nice and smooth. I like that very much. Now, in terms of the battery itself, if you end up with like 10% and you need to charge up, you plug it into a 100 kilowatt charger, you can go from 10 to 80% in like 32 minutes. That's not bad, is it? Stop at a services, have a wee, get a coffee, get a copy of Auto Express. So the interior is the usual Mercedes affair. Glitzy, lots of shiny finishes and lots of tech. But crucially, it's not an absolute screen fest like the EQS luxury saloon. So in here, I mean, it's pretty standard Mercedes. Feels very sort of A-class, if you will. You've got the two screens, digital dials, that's got your infotainment and your maps, etc., all hidden in there. I mean, it is a touch screen, so you can use it as a touch screen if you want. Or you can use the, um, the mouse pad down here, which is super satisfying, by the way, because there's a slight click to it. But mostly I've been using the controls on the steering wheel, which just makes everything a little bit easier. Oh, and also there is... Um, there is voice control in there, but I don't want to use it today because every time I've used it whenever we film with a Mercedes, it doesn't work. Turn on my heated seats. I'm increasing the temperature to 26 degrees. That wasn't the seats though, was it? She just did the climate control. Okay, what <laughs> just infuriates me. So we're not going to use it today, but to use it, you say, hey Mercedes. That's what you do when you want to use it. Overall, quality in here is very very nice got a little bit of veneer on the side here it's all very nice stitching very nicely laid out okay you've got some gloss black dust collecting plastic here which is a little bit irritating but everything else is lovely wireless charging brilliant 64 color ambient lighting who knew there were 64 colors but there are and they are in here I mean I've got like a bluey purpley color today because I felt like it just kind of matched my mood zen if you will. And there is one thing that I wanted to point out that I find super satisfying. There's a lot of satisfying things in this car. But for me, it's the steering wheel. Your thumbs perfectly rest in there. And every time I've driven this car, I go, oh, that feels so nice. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, and a panty roof. You know I loves me a panty roof. 
I already know what you're thinking. This is just another electric SUV, Nicola. Well, here's why it's a standalone superstar. So what is the big draw of the EQB? Well, I thought I might as well show you with my inflatable friends. It's a seven seater. Ta-da. You're right back there. And isn't that marvellous? This is what I mean when I say the EQB doesn't have any rivals. It doesn't excel in any particular area, but as a seven-seat electric car, nothing can match it. Getting into the third row is, well, is better for kids, shall we say. Not the most spacious, but you get a couple of cup holders and kids are going to love it back here. Rear seats are for the cool kids, right? Oh, uh, getting out for an adult isn't quite so uh, gracious. Some of you are probably screaming, but what about the Tesla Model Y? Well, you can't actually get one of those in seven-seater form in the UK. The much bigger Tesla Model X is almost twice the price of the entry-level 53 grand EQB, so you can rule that out. Then your other options are, what, electric vans, really? Citroen e, Space Tourer, Nissan ENV 200 Combi, which, let's be honest, you're probably not going to want to be seen in those. No judgment, but yeah, you know what I mean. Maybe you'd rather be seen in a Mercedes EQV. I mean, it's still a van. It's a bit nicer though, it's got 200 miles range, but that starts at 70,000 pounds. So in terms of price, the fact it's an SUV, it's electric, and it's a seven seater, this seems to be the only one, the EQB. Very nice. Well, what do you want to do, guys? Do you want to just... Do you want to pop to the pub or something? Because I'll be honest with you, Gary, you're looking a little deflated. 